Welcome back. In this first segment about why we should protect freedom of expression, we will turn our attention to two interrelated free speech theories, personal autonomy and the search for truth. The question that a conversation on freedom of expression ought to trigger are complex and metaphysical. Who are we? Who is the individual? What is individuality? What makes us who we are? What makes us in many ways unique and yet able to function in relationship with others? These are complex questions upon which philosophers, religious scholars, astrologers, astronomers, brain scientists, and many others have reflected over many centuries. But there are two concepts that come back in many writings, in one form, shape, word, or another. The concept of autonomy and the concept of truth. Let's begin with autonomy. What is it? For the purpose of this class, we shall use some simple definitions. Autonomy implies the capacity of a rational, meaning reasonable, individual to make an informed, uncoerced decision. It is ultimately our ability to make moral choice. According to Kant, it is by virtue of our autonomy that we are capable of morality, and we are moral to the extent that we are autonomous. The capacity for autonomy, according to Kant, is a basis of the dignity of human nature. Many thinkers have followed Kant in grounding the dignity of persons and respect for persons generally in their capacity for autonomy. And they have extended that concept. For instance, in politics, autonomy is used to imply self-determination autonomy of a community, of indigenous people, of a country. In medicine, respect for a patient's personal autonomy is a fundamental ethical principle. Except in circumstances well planned by law, a patient's autonomy must be respected by the state or the doctors. It means his or her right to make informed decision about their care. So what threatens or undermine our autonomy. Coercion, manipulation, determinations by others, by someone or something, assuming a supra-authority over our ability to make decisions. All of that threatens or undermine our autonomy. And what I've just described is actually a definition of censorship. Someone or something, governments usually, but not only, it could be community, leaders of that communities, someone or something decide for us what we can read, what we can see, what we can hear. By censoring freedom of expression and information, governments or other actors violate the capacity of individuals to make decisions for themselves. This has violate those individuals' autonomy and they violate their dignity. Put in more simple terms, through censorship, governments and other people deny individuals their autonomy. They treat adult individuals like children. This is very well captured by the Russian philosopher Alexander Radishev, who came to prominence for his book, Journey from St. Petersburg, to Moscow. He wrote in 1790, and I'm going to quote from him, the censorship has become the nursemaid of reason, wit, imagination, of everything great and enlightened. But where there are nurses, there are babies and leading strings, which often lead to crooked legs. If there are always to be nurses and guardians, then the child will walk with leading strings for a long time and will grow up to be a cripple. Censorship prevents people's personal growth and development. Censorship cripples us. In the same manner as malnutrition stops the body from growing and resisting disease, censorship impairs the mind from learning and developing. Censorship is a string leading the puppet. 
It prevents our autonomy, denies our free will, undermines our freedom of action. By preventing the realization of our autonomy, censorship prevents us from seeking and accessing knowledge, and ultimately from seeking and accessing truth. Truth, this is a very confronting concept and a complex one as well. So what do we mean by truth? It is not or not necessarily a moral or religious judgment passed on fact or the world, although it could be. It is more and it can be less. In the 17th century, the philosopher John Milton described truth as a streaming fountain. If a water flow not in perpetual progression, they sicken in a muddy pool of conformity and tradition. That to me is one of the best definitions of truth, one that links it to a process, a movement, a dynamic. Truth is exploration, both personal and social. Truth is the advancement of knowledge. What does it mean for censorship? How does the search for truth justify free speech. After all, could we not conceive of the advancement of knowledge as a process benefiting from regulation and protection? Writing in the 19th century, John Stuart Mill argued that prohibition of speech is wrong because those that censor, largely the state, assume they know better than anyone else what ought to be censored what is true or untrue, what is right or wrong. That is Mill's theory of infallibility. For Mill, governments can only reach a view regarding the correctness of a position or policy, provided people have been free to challenge and counter it. Controlling the advancement of knowledge supposes prior knowledge of what knowledge is, and will deliver. This, in and by itself, negates knowledge. Remember the water fountains, remember the water, the dynamic process. If you already know where you're going, then you are denying the search, you are denying truth. At a more practical level, these arguments suggest that government cannot be trusted to determine the appropriate procedures for the discovery of truth, as suggested by political theorist Eric Barrent. Better decisions are more likely to emerge from uninhibited discussion than from a discussion heavily regulated and controlled. This in turn brings us to the widely repeated concept of marketplace of ideas, according to which the truth will emerge from the competition of ideas in free and transparent debate. American Justice Holmes, in his dissenting opinion in Abrams versus the United States in 1999, first developed the argument on the free market of ideas when he wrote in defense of free speech and democracy, and I quote, when men have realized that time has upset many fighting faith, they may come to believe that the best test of truth is the power of the thought to get itself accepted in the competition of the market, and that truth is the only ground upon which their wishes can safely be carried out. And he adds that, at any rate, is the theory of the Constitution. It is an experiment, as all life is an experiment. So to conclude this first segment, the journey into why freedom of expression matters has led us to the notion of autonomy as the basis of human dignity. Censorship, by denying our capacity for autonomy, by denying our ability to decide for ourselves what we can read, what we can see, what we can engage in, censorship violates our autonomy 
and thus our dignity. Censorship also prevents us from engaging in the search for knowledge and the search for truth. It is a search which makes us better humans, which strengthens, fastens our senses, judgments, critical ability. It is a search which makes for better governments and societies. That at least is how many political theorists have argumented and demonstrated the importance of the search for truth for both individual and society. Let me leave you with three quotes which I hope will stimulate further thinking and exploration as you go along. The first one is from Milton. Give me the liberty to know, to utter and to argue freely according to conscience, above all liberties. And then the second quote from Lee Bollinger. Through the process of open discussion, we find out what we ourselves think. And we are then able to compare that with what others think on the same issue. The end result of this process, we hope, is that we will arrive at as close an approximation of the truth as we can. And then Holmes, Justice Holmes, in conclusion, that at any rate is the theory. It is an experiment as all life is an experiment. Thank you very much.